light and try to the point at my head. If you guys really want to see this side of my head, you got a good view right now. I guess the vibration's messing with it. Back. Well, welcome to the cubby hole. This is what the inside of a 67 Camaro with the hood shut looks like. Oh, and then the light goes out. Let me bring you back when I get another battery for the light. Alright, so kind of battery for the light. These are the old Makita lights. Why well, I like them because they they you can ratchet them up different directions and all that. The light for whatever reason eats that battery like crazy. I really need three. I've only got two batteries. I really need three of them. But uh, okay, so this was an idea of one of our subscribers and he was saying, hey, you know, you could get underneath it and, and that's a perfect idea. And so now I've got the hood pretty much exactly where I want it. So now I'm going to go ahead and tighten up the bolts from the underneath side here. Ugh. And uh, I'm gonna set you down. Maybe. the other side here I know you guys really wanted to watch me do this maybe there'll be something funny happen like the battery goes dead right when I get underneath the, the car uh, all right like these gear wrenches. I probably like ones that, because you got to flip these over instead of having a little uh, toggle on it. So I imagine it'd be cool if you had a little toggle so you'd have to flip them over all the time. But I don't know. They're not bad. <sighs> Way better than old style before these gear wrenches came out where you had to sit and do it one at a time. Well, that sucked. So there you go, and uh, that's what your spring looks like, uh, completely stretched out. So making some progress, and uh, you can see I got the little snubbers in there now. They came in; uh, they're up a little bit because I haven't got the latch in. Uh, somebody was asking about that too. There's the other one. Um, basically, I kept that latch out of there because. You don't want that, you really don't want the latch playing any part of this. You want your hood to shut. Uh, and I don't know if this is echoing because I'm standing inside the car, but literally now I'll put the latch in and I'll let it just fall as straight as I possibly can down into this with it loose to where it finds its own center. Then I'll slowly pull it back out and lock it down. That way this hood closes like 
perfection, hopefully. I mean, as, perfect, as perfection as you can get out of a 67 uh, Camaro muscle car. You know, uh, it is what it is. It's the mechanical parts. They're not like the, the what they make today, but, you know, we do the best we can what we have, so. All right, guys, I'm going to get out from underneath this car, uh, check out the gaps real quick. I'll take you with me. Looks like the battery's going to die on me, too. Uh, all right. Let's see what we got. That one looks pretty nice. Yeah, that one looks pretty nice, too. And it looks pretty centered. I mean, it might be a, a little tiny bit off, but man, we're gonna have to live with that. That's, that's gonna work. Um, let me put it down and see how it looks all the way back. And then of course I'll have to open it up a couple times. Make sure it doesn't move around. And I got these gaps up here uh, somewhat tighter. That's as far forward as I could get it. And if I come too much farther forward, it, it, it's gonna end up hitting. So I can't really come any much farther forward there or there. And you can see that's my finger. So it's pretty small. I'm gonna say on those ends, yeah, that's a 3 16 Of course, in the middle, it gets a little bit bigger. The only way I'm going to be able to fix that, like I said, is to probably put rod or something on it. Same with this. These gaps all look good. Looks good all the way back. Uh, shit. It looks like that side can still come that way just a little bit. Um, Alright, I'll keep working on it until I get it. I'm not going to be happy until I get it where I want it. I'm going to open this hood a couple of times and see see what it does as far as moving around. All right. Like I said, since that latch isn't latched in the front, I'm having to kind of push it down. here a little bit on that side it probably honestly could go down maybe a little bit more too like I was telling you to pull it back so this will pull down but man it's right there it looks really nice I also cleaned that yesterday now I've got handprints all over it but I washed off the ghost uh, the ghost stripes or the ghost flames so, that's pretty damn close if I shut it all the way down. In the back, now it's still just a little bit. It could go, it could go that way probably, oh, probably 10 thousandths, maybe, maybe 20 thousandths. But when I move that, it moves everything else. So, we'll see what happens. I'll, get, I'll bring you guys back. See ya. Alright guys, I thought I'd take you along real quick for this. Most of you guys know this. Um, and this is, I don't know exactly what they're going to, I'll just call it a hood latch, I guess. But anyway, so you can see here, okay, got these just to where they're just a little bit snug. I mean, just to, to where I can still turn them with my fingers. And then I'm gonna let this slowly guide itself down in there, okay, and find its own center, basically. Okay, now it's latched, so it's slid into its own place where it wants to be. Uh, and so now, I'm gonna push down on this and, and open this up and let this flow back out without letting it jar around and everything. So I'll end up having to put the camera down probably, but 
I'll show you what I'm talking about. You want to keep that. You want to keep that as as. Let's see. You know, let's see what I'm seeing there. Anyway, so keep that as still as you can, and let it easily, slowly come back out. While you're holding this this bracket here, uh, you don't want it to pop up like it does when you just pull that. Just come up enough to where you can get your wrench on that. Tighten that back down. I like tighten things crisscross from each other just like you would a wheel on a car or whatever. Uh, whether it matters or not, I have no idea. The way I've always done it, the way I've taught to do it. Uh, and it seems to work, so. adjustment in here. There's a nut right here so you can make this go up or down whichever way you want it to go. Hopefully my camera's showing what I'm talking about here. here. So right in here you can see that nut and loosen that nut and there's a, a uh, flathead screwdriver setting right there where you can turn that in and make this to where you can bring your hood up or down a little bit. Uh, like I said, you don't want to use this to go sideways, though. That's that's pretty hokey. Um, if you're using this to make your hood align, then it binds up real bad. It's hard to close, hard to open. So that's really not what you want. So anyway, uh, I get that where I want it. I'll, I'll run this back down and lock it down. Uh, and these are tight now, so I'm going to go ahead and shut it again. Alright, we still look good in the middle. It looks like it's it's nice and uh, even. No, not one side sticking up more than the other, so I'm gonna live with that. I think that looks good. All the way across here, it looks real nice. Uh, you can see the transition is real smooth. Alright, so I'm going to lock that nut down where it is. As you come this way, the transition's real good. Alright guys, there it is. I think I'm ready to start drilling some holes. That could be ever so slightly off, but I, it, there's just not gonna, there's, <laughs> it is what it is. I think Chip Foose is busy this week, so Darrell, if you wanted any better than that, you probably have to call him up and I'm sure he'll come fix it for you. But uh, there's some more of those grinder marks underneath. Obviously I had to fix this. I, I, I don't know what they, I don't know what they do. I'd like to go to that company for one day and just see what they have to fix and how this stuff comes in from you know I guess when it gets shipped up yeah I didn't even think about that this stuff gets shipped over from Taiwan I wonder if it gets shipped it to the manufacturer here and then they you know scuff it up and put the EDP stuff on it or you know if it comes in bare metal or if what well, I don't know how it gets shipped over here but at some point somebody's fixing these or trying to same over here you can see uh, bunch of little sand scratches all through here I think that's picking that up uh, that's underneath there anyway so yep there you go um, I think I'm gonna live with that and man you can see how ripply that freaking you see how ripply that is the uh, look at all those waves 
That right there is why you can't just put these parts on and paint them. Your car would look like a freaking uh, somebody threw a pebble in a pond just running down through there. So yeah, all that stuff's got to be uh, have a little bit of filler in it to get it all straight. So there you go. Yeah, same with this side. It's pretty pretty ripply down through there. We'll fix it. We'll make her right. Uh, we'll put some filler on that and block her out flat, straight and flat and, and be happy. All the lines look good. Everything's, I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, as good as I can get. Like I said, uh, if you want any better, better, you're probably going to have to pay someone else. Um, and I bet they charge a whole lot more. So, what we'll do now is, uh, and you can see how the hood pops. A little deal down here on the RS is the deals are down here. Pops right open. Goes right on up nice and smooth. And you gotta give it a little bit of a to get it closed, but it goes in straight, it doesn't kick it off one way or the other. So that adjustment looks good, worked good. So now we'll uh, we'll drill some holes. I'm gonna pop a hole here. Probably pop pop one right in here. I've already got it dimpled out. Uh, I'll probably pop one in here and under there on both sides. Um, I'm gonna open up my uh, doors here. Probably put one in this upper area, and I'll probably do some right back here maybe uh, not real sure I'll have to think about that think it think it out but uh, and then I've got to do the doors so when I pull the front clip off I'll have to do the doors before I can take them off and then uh, I think the next thing I'll do is start working those doors out and getting them all you know they're already pretty close. I've got to, like I said, I got to weld that keyhole up there. And uh, is this the door? This isn't the door with the little demon face in it, I don't think. Or is it? No, I think it's the other door. The other door was, I think, in worse shape. Yeah, yeah, there he is. He's smiling at you. Um, so yeah, I got a lot of work to do on that one. So I pull that off and go ahead and work it out, metal work it out a little bit more. But uh, we'll get her straight as, as possible and flatten it out and get her get her looking good. So everything else is pretty much where it needs to be. Um, you guys give me some thoughts on this. Tell me what you think. I've seen people weld these up. Um, and then you know, shape them back out a little bit with a, a grinder or whatever. And of course, from the factory, they seam sealed that. They may even brazed it. They may, or like, uh, you know, the copper or, or whatever it is, brass, whatever they put in there. But I'm not exactly sure um, what the downfall to, to welding this or the benefits. Um, I know I've got to seam seal it. It's already welded on the inside, but this is kind of a an area that I haven't really played with a whole lot on that is is uh, a good nice way to do that because that, that definitely needs to be dressed up better and I didn't know if I was going to do it and I don't want to put uh, any filler in there because that could crack out. So I think guys probably weld those up and then maybe they put a little filler over it and work the filler out. Uh, with a with a um, you know piece of 80 grit or whatever. Um, so let me know let me know what you think on that. Same on this one. And uh, we'll see see what I can come up with. Um, I still still have to seam seal the whole car, but I'm gonna wait. And, I'm gonna get it in epoxy. Get the whole thing in a black epoxy first, and then I'll go back and seam seal. I've got to seam seal all these up. Um, 
I got like you said, seam seal these up. I've got a lot of seam sealing to do actually. So um, I think all, yeah, all that stuff has to be seam sealed in there. So when I blow this all back apart and get it all on epoxy, then we'll start talking about seam sealing. And that's not something that there's a whole lot of videos on that I've seen. There's a few guys that's done it. I know uh, VW Darren did one on his uh, Nova here not too long ago. But, uh, you know, do they seam seal this? I don't know. Um, that's just some questions I'd have for you guys if, if you know these little, these little areas, tight areas like this, and then on the back. Um, is that a seam sealed area? So, all right guys, I'm gonna probably leave it there. I'm gonna pop some holes and then I'll probably be done for the day. You guys have a good one, see ya.